every day is a fight to make sure that I bring a positive attitude. I've had days where I've just felt extremely confident, extremely focused on myself and not really worried about external factors. I've had other days where I can't help but think about what my competitors are doing, my own inadequacies, what should I be doing, who am I letting down? Powerlifting, as much as it is a sport externally in terms of what you can actually load and lift on the bar, at the end of the day, you can only lift what you can lift. It is the biggest competition I've ever been in. It does matter the most at the end of the day. And it's hard to cope with that at the same time, being able to perform in a way that I know I can already. My name is Bryce Lewis. I am a powerlifter in the 105 kilo class and I'm a strength coach as well for the Strength Athlete LLC. I've been competing for six years in powerlifting and I've been doing bodybuilding before that and I've been lifting for a combined 12 years. I'm prepping for IPF World Championships Classic or RAW in Minsk, Belarus and this is the biggest competition I've ever done. So luckily, I get to maintain a pretty normal schedule. I work from home as a strength coach, so I'm answering emails in front of the computer for much of the day. My wife is a big part of my life. My dogs are a big part of my life, so I spend a lot of time taking my dogs to the dog park, um, taking them out to the bathroom, cooking them food, cooking myself food. My wife and I get to relax. We play a lot of video games. We go out to parks, out into nature. We go see movies. We spend time with each other and try to fit in date nights as well and just spend as much quality time with each other as possible. I fit in training five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, and I stay pretty strict to that as well. Balance is really important to me. I'm lucky that my job isn't really stressful, that I can kind of do it on my own terms. And of course, there's a lot of stress with running a business and taking care of a lot of athletes. However, we do our best to make sure there's a good work-life balance and that I'm not just working 24 seven and just, you know, constantly in front of the computer. And my wife's a big part of that and kind of pulling me back and making sure that I take time away and time for the two of us. Yeah. High five. High five. So I've got this element of being an athlete, going to the gym and stuff like that, but I really like to disconnect and just get out of the nature. I love making sure my dogs are happy. So we are lucky enough here in Denver, Colorado to have two great dog parks and we get to just take our dogs out and it's just amazing to see how happy that makes them. My wife and I came out to Colorado three years ago to look for jobs in public health, which is the field that she just graduated her degree in, and also to find an area to kind of start off. We just got married. Luckily enough, Denver, Colorado had a lower cost of living coming from LA. And as a side effect, Denver, Colorado and the surrounding areas have nature everywhere. So we can literally go in any direction and find hikes and waterfalls and rivers and trails and stuff like that. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Baby, you got to see this. I actually don't hike all that much. Uh, it's nice to get out every once in a while, but my wife is the one kind of uh, pushing us to go out on you know, different hikes or spend more time out on the trail. And I'm like, let's find something just flat so that I can just walk at a normal pace and just be finished with it. Because I, I think it does cut into recovery a little bit, especially if we're talking like long distance hikes and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm just not conditioned to it. 
I think routine and being stress-free are big parts of making sure that training is repeatable, that I'm able to put my best foot forward in training and probably avoid injuries in a lot of big ways. Stress is systemic. It's not just stress from training and then stress from other areas of life. Our body treats kind of stress globally, and so being able to reduce the stress in other areas of my life has definitely helped me recover from training and probably get stronger a little bit quicker. In fact, it's really important for me to kind of monitor total activity that I'm doing because I'm such a specialized athlete right now. Uh, it's the case where, you know, even if I go on like a two mile hike or something, like that really cuts into my next training session or if I go snowboarding or other extracurricular activities. So it's not that I don't want to do those things, but I really have to be mindful of which activities I choose to do when. So those are the kind of things that the closer I get towards a large competition, the more I kind of put to the side and just focus on the training sessions that I have to do. So um, that balance is sometimes hard to achieve, um, but it's definitely a goal and, and I work towards it every day. I think we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Can I grab a drink? No. Yeah, uh, by the exit. Okay. Depends on what you want. Like Alcohol. just soda or something? Oh, no, like just fucking Everclear? Everclear. Everclear. Have you heard that? Uh, no, but so. when I was playing volleyball in college, one of uh, my teammates, we were doing a travel to Tennessee. Uh -huh. like, oh, it's like, they sell it here, you gotta get it. So, needless to say, they performed like ass the following day. Uh, they drank it before? Yeah, before. That's not smart. I know. So today, I woke up, I had some coffee, relaxed a little bit, and then we're going to the dog park, and we're going to throw um, some toys around for the dogs, just get out in nature a little bit and relax. From there, we'll go to the grocery market, pick up some stuff so I can really cook, create some great lunch for us, and then we've got a great training session later on. Just a nice, slow tempo, get to play with my dogs a little bit, and just relax on the weekend. So a big part of this stuff is being able to share it with other people. It was great to have Barbell Brigade out here. We got to just shoot the shit about cameras and just really have a lot of fun. It's a hobby of mine too, and these guys are way better at it than I am, so it was good to get to learn from them and just geek out about different gear. Can I have one of these uh, Norwegian salmon fillets? Yeah, you want the, uh, the whole thing? <laughs> yes. And uh, do you want me to cut it up or do anything? <laughs> that one. Um, it, ah, I'll take care of it at home, to be honest. Yeah. Does it have skin on it? Ah, oh, it does. Perfect. Boneless though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boneless. It might find a couple linkers. That's fine. Um, uh, this one right here, all right? Yeah, it's perfect. So cooking is something that I picked up a while back when I was prepping for bodybuilding. When you don't really have a whole lot of calories to work with, uh, you want them to taste as good as possible. So I started watching Alton Brown's Good Eats, and it was like 14 seasons of basically how to cook, you know, and walking through ingredients and how you cut up vegetables and like food science behind it. And, you know, I'm really attracted to science and kind of just understanding things. And so I was really drawn to this different aspect of cooking that it wasn't just about the product, but it was about the process. And the benefit in cooking is like, you get to create things and at the end you get to eat something really delicious that you made. So part of cooking for me is about the process, about mastery, about becoming better and better and learning new things about um, this whole um, genre. So that could mean like creating uh, cured meats or creating cheese or all these things that we normally see at the grocery market but we take for granted. I get to actually make them and you know I think that's possible for everyone and it's just been a really wonderful hobby. Alright boy. Today I made some roasted vegetables. Uh, we had some orzo with some mixed herbs and mushrooms thrown in. And then we had a pan seared salmon on top with some herbs as well. Risotto is always really fun and the byproduct is just a really creamy, rich taste. Um, but we only had orzo at the house, so we kind of improvised. One of the big things about cooking is making sure that everything comes out at exactly the right time so that everything's hot and prepared at the same time. I think I nailed that today and it's always something that I'm trying to get closer and closer to being better at. And this is proof that I actually do eat vegetables, so get those in every now and then. There's, perfect. Jordan, what's going on, man? Um, 
just wanted to get back to you. Um, hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, in terms of the load on the squat, really, I, I don't want you to stress that. It's possible that it has to do with um, some of the other activities you were doing in terms of um, the drill and everything associated with that. So let me know kind of how that's factoring into your life right now. That's a perfectly fine way of structuring things and maybe that works better in terms of your attitude and how you approach the gym. Um, so let me know your feedback there. Um, I'll get it out to you. Hope you have a good rest of your weekend and I will talk to you soon. So I try not to work on the weekends, but when I do, I really try to make sure that I'm recording videos for athletes. It's a fantastic way to communicate emotion better than typing might. Training is a really fluid process, and I think it's very easy to just convert everything and crunch it all down into numbers. But you have to understand that the athlete has an intimate connection with their sport, and that you have to be flexible. You know, I mean, it, it's not going to be the case that everything that you put down on paper is something the athlete is going to do. What might be best for one specific athlete can be dramatically different from what might be better for another athlete. So teaching the athletes to be flexible, teaching them how to adjust is a really important process uh, and making sure that you're there for the process and that they realize that you're there in their corner. Just cut to. So today, working up to some singles on deadlift. We are currently three weeks out from competition, so this is kind of the last chance to shed a little bit of fatigue, hit something heavy, and then deload before the competition. Today's session shouldn't be that difficult. I'd really like to boost some confidence and make sure these singles go up well. I think we're hitting in the neighborhood of 680 to 690 on deadlift, which should be somewhere around 85% or something like that. Um, I've had some issues with deadlift positioning lately, um, but I've been feeling more and more confident, so I'm really excited to just nail these deadlifts and kind of move on. Getting ready for a big competition like this, I'm actually trying to keep as many things the same as absolutely possible for a few reasons. Number one, uh, the past three competitions I've had uh, wildly successful preparations for, and I've been able to go uh, with extremely high performances each one of those, just getting better and better. So it's kind of a case of if it's not broke, don't fix it. And the other thing is, I don't want to make this bigger in my mind than it is. You know, at the end of the day, it's a barbell and it's the same exact weight. I'm just in a different place, but that's not going to take more from me to be able to lift that than it would at any other point in my life. So I'm trying to kind of normalize a lot of this stuff so that I can normalize my own performance and my expectations too. Objectively, there's a real chance of getting a podium spot, um, finishing uh, among the best in the world and possibly even gold if everything goes well. Uh, not to say there's not fantastic competition, um, there's a, a top handful of guys that all could take it depending on how the day goes. Um, at this competition specifically, this is my first time at a world competition, I'm trying to pace my expectations, just go in and do the best I can for myself and for my country as well in terms of scoring team points uh, and just make sure that I um, bring in my best package um, coming forward. So going to this competition has been just a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I've had days where I've just felt extremely confident, uh, extremely focused on myself and not really worried about external factors. I've had other days where I can't help but think about what my competitors are doing, my own inadequacies, am I going to be able to perform, what should I be doing, who am I letting down, uh, just this whirlwind of thoughts um, and it can be tough to cope with that sometimes. I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to be the strongest I can. Um, I'm coming off a few minor injuries and stuff like that and luckily momentum is building, I'm feeling better but I'm not really sure this is the strongest I'll be. Um, but I'm excited and uh, ready to put my best foot forward.